I listen to speakers all day long, so they're a huge part of my life, and they're a huge part of my, whether I pull my hair out or whether I, whether I understand exactly what I'm hearing. I mean, at the end of the game, I just want my music to translate. Monitors are one of the most important components of a recording studio. Every decision you make is based on the sound coming out of your chosen monitors. Every mic you choose, every decision where to place the mic, which preamp, dynamic processor, every synth sound, every drum sound decision, every performance is monitored through them. Everything is judged based on the sound of your monitors. Atom Audio offers 17 different studio monitors, as well as six different subwoofers that give you options for full range systems, no matter the shape or size of your room. Yes, we are known for our air motion transformer folded ribbon tweeters, but they are just one component in our dedication to providing the best monitoring solutions in the market. The specific purpose of this video is to demonstrate the need for subwoofers and the best way to choose a sub for a match system. Many engineers fear using subwoofers in a studio and many who do use them do so for the wrong reasons or in the wrong way. People like to use them for louder bass when the actual best use is for lower bass. For decades, engineers relied on near field monitors that didn't represent, at least accurately, much below 60 Hertz because LPs, cassettes, and radio couldn't play that low. Modern delivery formats such as Blu-ray, video games, even MP3s and YouTube offer a full 20 Hertz to 20 kilohertz range. There is so much information going on below what any near field monitor can represent that adding a matched subwoofer to your system is crucial. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a big supporter of subwoofers. I haven't always been a big supporter of sub, subwoofers, uh, but uh, you know, when I started working here at Rubber Tracks, I got used to having our mains, which really give you a, a, a massive amount of um, lower extension uh, and a balanced lower extension, which I think is really the key. Uh, and once you get used to that, uh, when you don't have it, it, it's difficult to kind of go back because it's not just a power thing, it's not a loudness thing, it's not um, how much low end can I help the client here in the, in the back of the room. It's about getting that extra octave, octave and a half uh, of extension at the bottom. So you can clearly hear your, your low end, your bass, where exactly where it's sitting, your kick drum where it's sitting, but also more importantly, uh, it makes your speakers work more efficiently. So you can then, then hear your mid range much more clearly than you could before, which I, you know, I think people take for granted often that, yeah, you may not feel like you need a, a sub, and then you're sitting there with your, with your near fields or your, your monitors listening to them, and they're still trying to repre represent that, that low end that you're not hearing. So you, know, you pull up a sub into it, into the picture, and now you're hearing exactly where you should roll off your, you know, your, your high pass. Like, how far should you go with it? You're not just throwing one on and saying, yeah, all right, 80 hertz, that looks good. You're like, oh no, it actually has to go to 90, or I, I only have to go down to 50 with this, and then you know, it'll clean it up just the amount that I need it to. So yeah, the, having that extension, is, it's invaluable to me. I, it's hard to work without it sometimes. In a room like mine, which is pretty tight and made out of brick and wood, um, I figured, you know, slightly more contained was the way to go, and I didn't really see the need for a subwoofer. Um, and then I heard the Adam subwoofer, and I didn't realize what I was missing. Since we are talking about monitors that you can't hear, because this is the internet, in this video we're going to look at the quantitative what instruments play at which frequencies, and what are you not physically able to hear without a sub, but will still make it into your final mix. For example, here's our frequency graph with a cutoff point for the near fields. Anything below that line you will not hear or not hear properly in your studio. The fundamental frequency of the low E on a four string bass is 40 Hertz. The frequency of the low B on a five string bass is 31.5 Hertz. The wildly popular 808 kick drum is actually centered around 45 Hertz, yet extends much lower. Of course, with synth tracks, pipe organs, and all matters of explosions, the content can go really low. 
The subwoofer adds so much. I start my mix bass and kick drum, and that's the way it should be started with pop and rock music. That is the foundation, the kick and the bass, and then the rest of the mix flows on top of that. The subwoofer gives me such a clear picture, audio picture of what the kick and the bass are doing working together. And like I say, that's the foundation of, of the mixes I do. Here's an extract of a track that I mixed with a 24 inch kick and a five string bass that was impossible to make work without a subwoofer. You can see graphically here how the kick is living in the 40s with that bass jumping from the 60s to that low B around 30 hertz. Again, using a sub is crucial to make all of this work and work quickly. Without a subwoofer, it's all guesswork down there that the mastering guy is probably just gonna chop off. Having that level of control that you can get with a subwoofer, uh, if you don't have it, uh, it's, you're not gonna be able to maximize the, your, your audio. So, you know, you may not be hearing it, but you may sit there and send your, your mix out to mastering and, and it comes back and you can't understand why uh, it's not louder that, or as loud as something that you're hearing on the radio or on Spotify or, or you know, you name it. And I think that has to do a lot with you're not hearing um, the detail in your low end properly. So, you know, you're, you don't, you're, you can't clean up those mistakes and your mastering engineer can only do so much. So they're going to try to do as much as they can, but you know, it should be fixed in, in, as, as much as you can in the mix when you're mixing it. So knowing exactly how to uh, fit those pieces of the puzzle together in the low end so that it really just locks in perfectly is what's going to help you create a better mix. When interviewing Aaron, it reminded me of a track I mixed where the bass guitar was tracked remotely. As you can hear, it's a very articulate part. I was maxing out the master bus whenever I got the notes anywhere near audible in the mix. It turns out that the guy who tracked it had both a direct track and an 18 inch bass amp mic'd, then summed them together. When I got in my own space with a sub, the entire room started shaking because all that content in the 20s, as you can see. It was eating up all the headroom and I didn't know to filter it out until I got into a 2.1 monitoring room. I did a second order high pass filter on 45 hertz and the whole thing came together very quickly. But enough about me. Uh, yeah, the sub's real great. Uh for obviously you want to check your mixes, make sure uh, you're not blowing up the low end. Um, a lot of people who don't mix with the sub, um, if you don't have the sub to cross, to reference your mixes on, uh, then you don't know if, you know, there could be a, a 30 or 40 hertz thing in there ready to blow up someone's amp and you just don't know. We often get asked if all subs are the same or if it's okay to put a cheap sub with premium Atom Studio monitors. Look, when it comes to physics, you get what you pay for. Yeah, with the A5X and the Sub-8, the, um, the combination gives me a lot of, you know, like all the, all the mid-range and upper-end detail that I need. And then the Sub is, um, is filling in uh, a really clear, it's not just rumble, it's, it's actual like low-end material that I can work with in a mix. My control room is, is slightly large, you know what I mean? And the Sub-15 has, in my opinion, done everything that I needed to do with, you know, with this room as far as filling space and filling uh, bottom end. The, it seems the trick of it for me with what, what work I've done with the Atom Sub so far is just having something that can handle any decibel level and has the power on reserve and has that full extension. I've got it turned down to almost nothing and it adds like, three extra octaves on the bottom of everything I'm hearing in the best, like in the best possible way. Um, yeah, I, I'm sold. The 2.1 thing, even in the tight space, I'm sold. You know, when you're picking your sub, I think a lot of people don't understand that, you know, you, you need to have a really good sub. If you get a, if you get a bad sub, you're just going to end up with noise. It's just going to be like that one note, low end, woofy, muddy sounding, Base. It's not going to give you the clarity that you need. So having a sub that's so efficient as the sub 10, uh, you know, lets you hear those individual bass notes going down and the, the harmonics and everything. And, and the fact that it's so quick allows you to go then also hear, uh, you know, your kick drum versus the bass and, uh, and all, all of that. So having that, yeah, having that power, and it is really powerful. And we're not in a small room, you know, it's a, we're in a pretty nice sized room here. Uh, 
it's a uh, it's it's important and, and the amount of power that that comes off of that thing is is really impressive physically moving air to produce accurate sound is what we do and there is no difference with the subwoofer so no not all subs are the same and they are just as important as your tops it is important to match the sound pressure level or spl rating of the subs with the tops for instance, we know our A7X plays in a max SPL of 114 dB per pair, so we want a sub that matches that SPL. A common mistake is to try to save money and get a small, cheap sub just to add some thump. Here, we are playing pink noise through a pair of A7Xs and a sub-7. When played at low volume, the system is fine, but as we turn it up, you can see the low end drops off because the sub seven maxes out way before the tops do. And the louder we play it, the less flat it is. Here, we're going to do the same test with our A7X, but with a properly SPL matched sub 10. You can see at any volume level, the response remains whole. you know people in your workspace and they're listening to their mixes they're always going to want to you know hear the hyped low end of the sub um, just to get them amped up and feel great about the song that you're working on so and during tracking um, I love to turn them up because the clients you know love this this just the sound that comes out of it you know it's it's a it's a it makes people exciting and that's what you want in a, in a studio environment you know to keep that excitement going every time the clients would come in the, the we just go boom turn it up all the way and it just sounded loud and all that. and everyone's like i love it it's amazing well you know and that was sort of a way of tricking the mind a little bit because when, when you're just bombarded by quality sound it's it, it's it's an experience it's a visceral experience and so the being able to have that and have quality monitoring at low levels is pretty amazing because you can achieve what you need to need to achieve in terms of detail and and like hearing little you know little things even down in the subs and then when clients want to want to hype it up and, and rock it out you can do that in the in the with with the atoms 2.1 at least the image doesn't change it just gets louder and bigger and, and you know yeah so it's fun it's fun to listen to that's 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 what this is all about, right? Like, we're not having fun, what are we doing? <laughs> so yeah, we preach accuracy, precision for every decision you make in your space. But when tracking, when emotions are high, nothing is better than turning it way up, which is something the Match 2.1 systems from Atom Audio also bring to the mix.